This week on DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon. Calling predators, you've got to put in the work. You've got to be patient, you've got to try a lot of stands. And if you do that, eventually you'll be successful. <laughs> DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon is presented by DSC, Conservation, Education, and Protecting Hunter's Rights. And by Ruger, Rugged, Reliable Firearms. Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable. And by Trijicon, Brilliant Aiming Solutions. Both Blake Barnett and I really, when the time allows, love hunting predators. Had an invite to come out to far west Texas, just north of Kent, which is about maybe 100 miles or so east of uh, El Paso, to uh, hunt property that is leased by Greg Simons. Now, Greg is, is the owner and primary manager and of Wildlife Systems, which is one of the premier hunting outfits there is in the world, actually. I mean, but he's, he specializes a lot of things that happen in South Texas and West Texas. He very graciously invited Blake and me to come out to his personal mule deer lease out there to help him try to remove some of the predators to try to increase the uh, fawn survival rate. One of my favorite parts of the world is the Trans-Pecos area of Texas, and you can see it back here in the background. To most people, it doesn't look like it ought to be anything to lose here except rattlesnakes and grasshoppers and jackrabbits, but as Don here can tell you, there are a lot of mule deer in this country. There are a lot of coyotes, a lot of bobcats, a lot of javelina. And mountain lions. And mountain lions. So we're here for two or three days. We're gonna go out and see if we can't call up a coyote or two, and maybe a bobcat and a javelina. And a lot of times these old mule deer respond to these okay, calls too, don't they? Yep. Blake, you got your gun? Got the call? Ammo. Ammo. Let's go see what we can find.
This country out here in West Texas is big, it's vast, it's open. You know, the game plan for the most part was to try to make as many stands as we possibly can. If we didn't have something happen in the first 10 or 15 minutes of calling, we picked up and we were moving again. This segment is brought to you by Double Nickel Taxidermy. First stand of the morning. Sun's coming up over the horizon over there. Let's see what we get done. All right, let's go see if we can call one in this morning. to your left. Hit. There he goes down right down. There you go, he's got him. He's down right there, we'll keep on calling. Two dogs right there. Actually, three had one come down that hill. Hey. Okay, man. Good that job. Worked, that worked pretty good. Two of them down, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You punched that second one hard. Yeah, man. he, he run a long way. Yeah, he did, but he folded nothing over here. He, He's just right down here. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go get the pickup. I'll go recover uh, these two we'll, dogs. Uh, I'm going to follow this little road up in here and we'll just uh, pick you up here. Okay, I'll go okay. get the dogs recovered. All righty. Good sit. First morning sit. First, first morning stand. Set the bullet HP just right here on an angle on this ridge that we're sitting on. It didn't take long, probably three to four minutes. First dog come around this point, come to the left, and then actually had two more dogs. One that did get away from us, but one that I actually connected on. He got off the draw, so I'm gonna go recover both of them. Recovered this female coyote off the hillside over there. The second, actually the third dog that came in on this stand. Second dog we couldn't get shot at, slipped, got, got the slip, got away from us, but pretty dog, you see how she's much lighter in color. You know, more white down the throat patch and on her chest. But a mature female, so we killed a, killed a mature male and a, and a female on this first stand this morning. Perfect quiet morning. Just helped out the the predator population here out in, in West Texas on, on a ranch that uh, is really trying to manage their desert mule deer herd and such. So these are certainly some fawn killers and hopefully we, we help that out a little bit. Teeth on that female right there. We'll get these loaded up though and see if we can't make another stand this morning and locate a couple of others.
This segment is brought to you by Ripcord Rescue Travel Insurance. At least what two or three mule deer down there. Yeah, we'll see if we can call them. Yeah, let's listen. I'm there you go. I'll try to set up over by that ledge again, or that uh, so tall actually. I'll slip in there. Hopefully, they won't see us with this wind. They shouldn't be able to hear us. respond to the predator calls. Let's see what happens. I've called them up many times, big bucks, little bucks, a lot of does. So very often they come on and run. We're fortunate here, we get this wind blowing in our face. I don't know how far they can hear this call. Let's see what happens. <laughs> She's right here, about 20 yards away. Well, wait. Her whole tail is all bristled out, almost like a white tail. afraid they're gonna get up here on top of the hill and catch our scent, but they just got up here and started walking away when I quit calling. Love messing with deer, mule deer particularly. They respond generally very well to these predator calls. That's why you always carry one with you whenever you go on a, on a mule deer hunt or anywhere out where you got mule deer, whether it's a mule deer season or not. Mule deer season here closed down about a week ago. Bucks still have horns or antlers. An absolute blast to call and mess with and, and just to, to kind of see what happens. Let's see he's on and get back to the truck and hit another spot. See if we can call up some mule more some more mule deer. <laughs> see if we can call up a few more mule deer or maybe a coyote or a bobcat. One of the things you look for, I enjoy looking for arrowheads. Generally, I pick them up, the artifacts just lay them right back down. In this part of the country, it's very easy to find these old fire mounds. No telling how long they camped here. I mean, you start looking at all these little fire mounds, there'd be a pretty good sized midden, like back over here, and there'd be a larger one. And then you find all these small little individual fires where they had their little individual huts set up or whatever they were using that they were staying in. But there is this sign that goes on at least a mile back into this canyon. And it's about three quarters of a mile from here to where the, the water is over there. And where the water is, there are actually grind holes inside the big stones right on the water's edge. But these little campfires like this, these little campfire spots, to me are just so intriguing. You know, if you think 
and let your imagination run, run a little bit wild. You can almost imagine a little mud hut set up right here somewhere and people sitting around, little individual families, husband and wife or maybe some kids and some older people and have a big old fire going right here. And if, if they killed something to eat, what they would do is they would build a fire, throw rocks on top of it, heat the rocks, and then they would throw the meat on top to cook the meat. But it's a, to me, this country is just so fascinating in so many different ways. But when you find one of these old Indian campgrounds like this, I look for airheads a lot, but I've gotten to the point over the years that if I find anything, unless I really feel like I've got to turn it into one of the archaeologists that I know, that they can do some work. Generally, I'll just look at it, take a photograph of it, and put it right back, and just kind of leave it for posterity. But finding these places like this is just so fascinating. And here in West Texas, where we are, when you find a spot like this, you've got to take time to go look around because there's no telling what you can find in here. That's dearly and truly why I'm proud to be from the Lone Star State of Texas. I mean, evening sun sets out here on the West Texas desert. It just doesn't doesn't get much better than, than this right here, for me anyway. If you don't believe in God, that's right, as Don just said over here, or God this week, if you don't believe in God, then look at that right there because that is, that is a sign right there from, from our God. Beautiful. DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon is presented by Ripcord, Canatrek, boots for the trail less traveled, Bino Dock, what a cup holder should be, and by Hoffpower Auto Group. set up right out here, right along in here. You watch this out in here. Yeah. I'll kind of cover this. I'll be right down here yeah, below you there. I'll okay. get on the other side of that bush. Right, right here. Perfect. Yeah, this will be good right here. Yeah. Coming in. Way to go, baby. Good job. That worked out good. Took yeah. him a while and he came a long way, didn't he? Yes, he did. He was way out there coming in. But he committed. Yeah, yeah, he came down. I'll go, go down there and pick him up. Talking, yeah, big dog. Yes, he is. Got a male, female, oh, big female, big female. With a set of teeth on it. Pretty pelt on it too. Yeah, yeah. teeth. Fat too, man. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep, we're helping out the. Yep, saving the fawn crops. That's right, the mule deer fawns that 
Mr. Simons is raising out here on this on this property. Look at this belly on this. Yeah, side. yeah. Long hair on that dog yeah. too. Good job. Nice collar. That set up for good. That yeah, dog, yeah. she come from a long way. I'm telling you. She's after a meal. She was. This morning was this morning she wanted to do some meat. We took care of that. So I'm gonna drag her back to the okay. to the truck. You know, with the general seasons come to a close, to me I always find myself and it's always a great time to occupy not only free time, but time shared with either family or with friends, and that is get out and try to call some predators. I mean, predation control is important as a conservationist, and a lot of these Texas ranches truly appreciate someone who wants to come out and help with predation control. You know, whether it's coyotes, bobcats, foxes, even feral hogs now, you know, are, are predators to a lot of these ranches down here in the Lone Star State. Getting out there with your Bullet HP by Convergent Hunting Solutions is a fun way to pass the time. I love the western part of the state of Texas and to spend time with, with Greg Simons with, with, on his properties that he leases for wildlife systems and be out there with the Convergent Hunting Solution electronic call with Bullet HP and the mouth phone call and just the challenges that go into trying to call predators and kind of reminisce a little bit about old times but also to go back and kind of feel the history of, of some of the people that lived there many, many years ago. Absolutely great time. Absolutely great hunt.